Hi there, and welcome to 272analytics.com's tutorial on Spearman correlation in Stata. I think the best way to introduce Spearman correlation is to contrast it to Pearson correlation, with which you're probably more familiar, and to just show you how these two kinds of correlation can lead to some different results. I think that's a great way of actually showing you the practical difference rather than getting into the mathematical theory uh, behind Spearman correlation. So let's start by using states2, which is a pre-installed database in Stata. To get to it, you just type web use and states2. I'll show you what it is. It's, uh, it's a kind of a demographic database here where we have states, uh, median age, uh, marriage rate, and the divorce rate four states. And we might be interested in, let's say, a correlation between the marriage rate and the median age within a state. And if we wanted to explore that through Pearson correlation, we would use the pwcore command here, pwcore marriage rate median age comma sig. So we see that the significance, that it's, it's a non-significant relationship between median age and the marriage rate. We see here that our R value is actually very, very low. Now, here's something that's uh, that's sort of interesting, and I, I picked this data set because Stata also uses it in their documentation to show the difference between Pearson and Spearman correlation results. And that's a difference through which we'll be able to understand also the theoretical differences between these two types of correlation. I want to show you something. I sorted this data set on the variable of marriage rate, and then I listed the states that have the highest marriage rates. And just a quick word about this code over here. When we do sorts in Stata, it is ascending. So you start with the lowest value there and you move on to the highest value. So if you want to list uh, the highest values after sort, you actually have to use this version of the in command. This tells you that you're gonna pick the five values from the bottom which, because of the ascending nature of sort, are going to be the highest values. Now, this is what's striking my eye over here, the Nevada marriage rate. And obviously that's going to be a function of people going to Las Vegas to get married. Uh, we know that. The data set doesn't. Um, I actually want to show you how you would actually get to this in a scatter plot as well. Let's do a scatter plot and label it by state. Um, and this is not necessarily publication quality, just, this is just to show you for your own purposes uh, what these data look like. Nevada is way, way out here uh, on marriages per 100,000, as you can see, far, far away from the other states. And every other state is sort of bunched up over here. So Nevada is an extreme um, value. So I want to show you what actually happens when you drop Nevada and you run the Pearson correlation again. And don't worry, this is going to take us straight to Spearman correlation in time. Uh, what I've actually done here with this command, if you look closely at this code, uh, I just dropped um, Nevada because I told this Pearson correlation to only work with states that have a marriage rate below uh, 174. So as you can see, that hits every state behind Nevada. And I put in SIG here again. And now we can see that there's actually a negative correlation between median age and the marriage rate. And it's it's quite statistically significant. So getting rid of just one value did that. I'm gonna scroll up here just so I can reiterate the difference. Just getting rid of one state gave us an enormous shift in our Pearson correlation results, right? We changed, uh, we changed the magnitude, we changed the statistical significance. Now, what does this have to do with Spearman's correlation? Well, let's run a Spearman and actually show you what happens. Um, notice that Spearman's row over here is extremely similar to the R value that we got through Pearson correlation. Um, and we have the, P we have the same uh, low, pro uh, low sig value that we got through Pearson correlation. Here's what happened, though. We didn't drop Nevada from the Spearman correlation. We dropped it from Pearson correlation, and that's after we went through this whole process of finding the outlier, which we might not have done if we didn't know in advance to look for it, if we weren't as diligent as we should have been in looking for distributions and outliers. We might have just carried out the Pearson correlation, uh, finished it, and reached pretty much the wrong conclusion about the relationship between median age and the marriage rate. 
Now, how, how is it that Spearman was able to save us from that error? Uh, it's pretty simple. Pearson correlation works on uh, essentially raw numbers, and Spearman's correlation works on ranks. So if you have, let's say, uh, you know, you have 50 states, and they each have a marriage rate, the way Spearman would do it is Nevada, let me show you here, Nevada would rank first because it had the highest marriage rate, and then South Carolina would rank second, uh, Oklahoma would rank third, and so on down. So what Spearman does is it translates these numbers here that I'm showing you with my mouse into ranks. Pearson correlation doesn't do that. And you've actually seen now what one weakness of that aspect of Pearson correlation is. If you have a number that's just way, way, way out there and it's part of a correlation model, it's going to influence the results substantially. Um, that's why Spearman's correlation makes a lot of sense when you when you can sort, um, when when you can take a variable and look at it in terms of a ranking more so than you know a sum. Uh, in a case like this, if you didn't know really much about these data, but you did know that okay, these are states. I'm dealing with states here. It would probably be a good idea to run both Pearson uh, and Spearman's in order to look at the model differences. If those differences didn't turn out to be so great, then you might stick with Pearson's. Uh, however, what you've seen is obviously the differences are, are huge. Um, the entire model changes when we do the Spearman. And that would be a heads up to you that there's something that needs to be looked at more closely in the data. Uh, let me take this opportunity to say that uh, please generate box plots, uh, visualize data, uh, look at outliers. Uh, Stata is really good with uh, with labeling, for example. You know, here we use the M label function here, so that in our scatter plot uh, we were able to look at states. You know, by name. Uh, and even if we weren't interested just in Nevada, I know that this is kind of really busy over here, uh, but still we learn some, we see some things visually. We see that Utah has a very, very low uh, median marriage age, and for Florida it's much higher. And, and of course for Nevada uh, it has more marriages. So the label function and any attempt to visualize your data really, really, really helps you uh, when it comes to the choice of um, of correlation test. In this case, someone who created that scatter plot and knew enough to use Spearman's would probably have used it right off the bat, knowing that turning Nevada into a rank would be more useful than just keeping that way outlying value from Nevada. Anyway, I hope this tutorial was useful for you. I do encourage you to visit 272analytics.com for our entire suite of free software tutorials, not just in Stata, but SPSS, R, eViews, mini tab we have many 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 other videos like this one we include code and every video really is an attempt to give you whatever it is that you need uh, to master a certain procedure in, st in uh, the statistical software of your choice uh, and why are we doing this why would we make such an immense resource available for free and, and actually encourage people to use it it's because we're consultants so as data consultants our job is to work closely with students on the design of quantitative academic work. So if you're a graduate student, you're chapter three, uh, and then you're chapter four, data analysis. We take your data, run your data, interpret them, uh, code them, and help you understand the story that your data are telling so that you can just create the perfect chapter four, the perfect chapter three. It's ethical guidance. Uh, we are not writers. We're not going to write your chapter four or your chapter three for you, but what we'll do is we'll create the perfect blueprint and explanation whereby you can turn our guidance into your perfect chapter three, your perfect chapter four, uh, and go into your dissertation defense uh, or uh, your evaluation process with full confidence. Thank you so much, and I hope to speak to you again soon.